Hello there, welcome to the class. In the previous classes, we looked at the moon, the various phases of the moon. We also looked at the stars, the constellations and we also looked at one particular unit of measurement of distance, the light year. In today's class, we will study about the most important object in the sky, which is the sun. We will also look at the planets and various other objects that are present in the solar system. The solar system is made up of the sun, various planets and their satellites. In addition, there are objects in the solar system that cannot be classified as planets or satellites. These are the asteroids, comets, meteors, etc. We will study about them one by one. We will begin by discussing about the sun. You know that the sun is the closest star to us. You also know that sun is the primary source of heat and energy for us. The sun is at a distance of about 150 million kilometers away from us. This distance is much larger than the typical distances that we see in the day to day life, but it is also much smaller than the light year. So, scientists came up with a new unit called the astronomical unit, which represents the distance between the sun and the earth. The sun is a giant ball of plasma. To know how big sun is, consider this. The sun is nearly 109 times bigger than earth and nearly 33,000 times more massive than earth. The surface temperature of the sun is approximately 5,800 degrees Celsius. Do you know how high it is? Do you know how hot 5800 degrees Celsius is? For comparison, human body temperature is approximately 37 degrees Celsius. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. A red hot iron you see at a blacksmith's workshop is roughly 600 degrees Celsius. The flame of a candle is about 1100 degrees degrees Celsius. The gas stove in your kitchen can produce flames that are as hot as 1500 degrees Celsius. The surface of the sun is more than 5 times as hot as a candle flame. Remember, this is only the surface of the sun. Inside the sun, the temperature can go up to millions of degrees. We use the word plasma to describe the sun. Do you know what plasma is? Have you come across this term before? You have studied that there are three states of matter, namely the solid, liquid and gas. Plasma is considered the fourth state of matter. You have actually seen this state of matter. The flame that you see on top of a candle or in the burner of the stove in your kitchen or the lightning that you see during the monsoon. The neon signs that you see outside the shops are all examples of the fourth state of matter called plasma. Let us now turn towards the planets. The sun has eight planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. In addition to the eight planets, there is also Pluto, which till a few years ago was considered a planet. But a change in the definition of the term planet caused it to drop out. We will now look at these planets one by one. In the night sky, you might have seen some objects that appear bright, but do not twinkle. These are the planets. Just like earth, these planets do not emit their own light. They in fact reflect the sunlight that falls on them. The planets move around the sun in specific paths called the orbits. The time taken by a planet to revolve once around the sun is called the period of revolution. Each planet has its own orbit. The size of the orbits are also different. In fact, some of the orbits are tilted with respect to other orbits. This is the reason why the planets do not collide while they move around the sun. Planets also rotate 
about their own axis and this rotation causes the days and nights on those planets. Different planets in fact rotate with different speeds and hence the days and nights are of different lengths on different planets. We will now look at these planets one by one. We will begin with the planet Mercury which is the closest to the sun. Mercury is in fact the smallest planet in the solar system. Since Mercury is very close to the sun, it is not very easily visible in the night sky. In fact, the Mercury is about 2.6 times closer to the sun than the earth is and it takes about 88 days to orbit the sun. To spot the planet Mercury, you have to look very close to the horizon either just after the sunset in the evening or early in the morning just before sunrise. This is because the planet Mercury is visible only for a very short duration just before sunrise or just after sunset. Let us now look at the second planet in the solar system Venus. Venus is also our nearest neighbor and hence it is one of the brightest planets visible in the night sky. Venus is about 108 million kilometers away from the sun and it takes approximately 224 days to go once around the sun. This means looking from the earth, Venus appears to reverse its, its direction once every 584 days for a period of 41 days. This is called the retrograde motion of Venus. Interestingly, Venus rotates about its axis in a very slow fashion. One day on Venus lasts about 243 days on Earth, which means a day on Venus is longer than one year on Venus. Venus is nearly as large as the Earth itself. Venus just like Mercury is visible only for a short duration just before the sunrise or just after the sunset. However, unlike Mercury, it is very easy to spot Venus because of its brightness. Here is an assignment for you. What color are Venus and Mercury? Also find out how many satellites do Mercury and Venus have. We will now look at the third planet from the sun, which is our home planet the earth. It is also the only planet that harbors life as far as we know and hence it becomes our duty to protect mother earth. We will now look at some facts and figures about earth. As we discussed earlier, earth is about 150 million kilometers away from the sun. Earth revolves around the sun in approximately 365 days. Also, Earth rotates about its axis once every 24 hours. Interestingly, Earth's axis of rotation is tilted by 23 and a half degrees. On Earth, we see a lot of geographical features. We see mountains, rivers, oceans, deserts, ice caps, etc. Earth also has a weather system. We experience hot summers, cold winters, some places experience very heavy rainfall, some places experience snowfall, etc. Do you know why this happens? This is due to the rotation and revolution of the earth. The inclination of earth's axis of rotation causes sunlight to fall at different angles on different days. Hence, some days are hotter and some are cooler. This tilt in the earth's axis of rotation leads to what we call as equinoxes and solstices. Let us see what these are. We will now look at this diagram. This diagram shows the position of earth at four different times in an year. We have marked the position of earth during the solstices and equinoxes. We will see what these are. Solstices are those days when the sun appears 
at the northernmost or southernmost points in the sky. This can happen twice in an year, once in June and once in December. Equinoxes are those days when the sun is at the highest point possible in the sky. Equinoxes too happen twice in an year, once in March and once in September. Notice that these events divide one year into four approximately equal parts. We observe the solstices and equinoxes because of the tilt in the earth's axis of rotation. During the June solstice, the north pole is tilted towards the sun and hence the sun appears to be at the northernmost position in the sky. During the December solstice, the north pole is tilted farthest away from the sun and hence the sun appears to be at the southernmost point in the sky. Now here is a question for you, are there weathers, solstices and equinoxes in other planets too? Find out. We will now look at the next planet in the solar system, which is the Mars. Mars is also the second nearest planet to the earth. Mars has a very elliptical orbit, which means the orbit of the Mars looks like a circle that has been stretched along one of its diameters. Mars on an average is approximately 225 million kilometers away from the sun. One year on Mars is approximately equal to 687 days on earth. Also Mars takes nearly 40 minutes more to rotate about its axis. But Mars is only nearly half as large as earth. The axis of the rotation of Mars is also tilted by approximately 25 degrees. Does this mean there are solstices and equinoxes on Mars also? Think about this. Scientists have long been curious about Mars. It was long thought that Mars could support life. We now know that Mars has ice caps around its north and south poles. We also know that Mars is a very dusty planet. Mars has two satellites called the Phobos and the Deimos. This is the same planet to which we sent Mangalyaan in 2013. So these are the four innermost planets in the solar system, namely the Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. Because of their rocky nature, these planets are also called the rocky planets. So in today's class, we have looked at the four innermost planets of the solar system. We have also studied some of the properties of the sun. We have defined one more unit of measurement for distance, which is the astronomical unit. In the next class, we will look at the various other planets and asteroids, comets, meteors and other objects present in the solar system.